For decades, pizza and Chinese food were basically the only meals available for delivery. But that's changing. Uber Eats, Grubhub, and other third-party delivery services mean that you can get anything from bagels to baked Alaska delivered to your door. That's bad news for pizza chains, even for Domino's, America's number one pie maker. After all, the company built its business on fast delivery. The pizza chain has seen same-store sales go slow amid the delivery boom. Still, Domino's has come back from much worse. At the height of the financial crisis, its same-store sales shrank by 6.1%. So how did Domino's manage to claw its way back? And how can that help the pizza chain stay on top today? A slice of pizza can come topped with gold leaf or caviar, costing you up to $337. But the dish has much more humble origins. It first appeared in Naples, Italy in the 1700s as food for the lower class. When Italians immigrated to the US, so did pizza. At the beginning of the 20th century, New Yorkers were starting to perfect the dish. Factory workers in a rush would pick up a slice for lunch. New York was already a multicultural city in the early 1900s, but if you were to visit a northeastern pizzeria at this time, you'd likely be surrounded by mostly Italian Americans. To become a mainstream favorite, pizza needed a little help from a few restaurant chains popping up in the Midwest. Domino's wasn't actually founded by anyone with Italian heritage. In 1960, Tom and Jim Monahan, two Irish American brothers, borrowed $900 to buy a pizzeria called Dominic's. Within months, Jim gave up his half of the business to Tom in exchange for a Volkswagen Beetle, the same car that they were using for deliveries. The company was now all Tom's. He changed the name from Dominic's to Domino's. The original Dominic's store had grown into three Domino's locations by this point. In 1967, Monaghan started franchising restaurants. New franchisees didn't have to pay an initial fee to open their own store. Instead, they just had to manage an existing Domino's for a year. The company focused on placing its stores near colleges and military bases. Both had lots of customers looking for a cheap meal. Unlike mom and pop pizzerias, Domino's was efficient. Its ovens had rotating racks. It had standardized the delivery box and all of the pizzas started to look the same too. Around the same time, Pizza Hut and Little Caesars were also getting their start in the Midwest. Little Caesars had 50 stores by 1969, but Pizza Hut was far and away the fastest growing chain of the 1960s. Unlike Domino's, it wanted customers to eat their pizza inside their restaurants. And it had more options, a salad bar, pasta dishes, and alcohol. In 1970, just 12 years after it was founded, Pizza Hut opened its 500th location. But Domino's was doing its best to catch up. By 1978, it had 200 stores, and the chain just kept growing from there. The pizza chain's 30 minutes or less delivery promise helped set it apart from the competition. Domino's created the guarantee in 1984, and for nearly a decade, the incentive worked. But the company dropped it in 1993, after several lawsuits stemming from car accidents involving delivery drivers. By 1998, Domino's had thousands of stores and $3.2 billion in annual sales. Monahan decided to sell the company so he could focus on philanthropy instead. He found a buyer in Bain Capital, Mitt Romney's private equity firm. A 93% stake went for $1.1 billion in 1998. Monahan retired from the pizza biz with money from the sale. Entered David Brandon as the new CEO in 1999. Before joining Domino's, he was the chief executive of coupon distributor Velasis, which had one of the biggest IPOs of the 1990s. In 2004, Brandon took Domino's public. At the time, it was a market leader in delivery pizza, and only Pizza Hut had higher annual sales. But there were already signs of trouble. In the 90s, frozen pizzas had their big break, rising crust. Customers started choosing cheaper frozen DiGiorno's pies over fresh options from Domino's, Pizza Hut, or Papa John's. With a fresh pizza market shrinking, competition between the biggest players grew fierce. The pizza wars started heating up in the late 90s. Pizza Hut even sued Papa John's for false advertising. Papa John's had long claimed it used better ingredients for better pizza. Pizza Hut disagreed, 
arguing that there was no scientific evidence that said that fresh tastes better than frozen. In the early 2000s, China and India became new battlefields for these pizza wars, as the three major American pizza players started to open franchises overseas. To stay competitive, Domino's couldn't boost sales by hiking prices, so starting around 2003, sales unsurprisingly flattened. Another big problem for Domino's, its pizza became forgettable as it cut corners on ingredients in order to keep its pizzas cheap. Domino's used frozen, canned, and pre-made ingredients to cut down on costs. As the economy started to slip, we were making uh, independent changes that in, in, in small doses seemed like good ideas. For example, people were um, uh, trying to drive a little bit of cost out of sauce, and so they cheapened it, and, and they said, we can save some money here, and nobody's gonna notice. And another team did the same thing with cheese, and another team did the same thing with dough and with meats. And what happened was that there was a collection of individually good ideas that all added up to one bad idea. That meant that its pizza could be assembled quickly, but customer satisfaction surveys showed customers just weren't satisfied. Papa John's better ingredients, on the other hand, made customers think that its pizza used fresh ingredients. Domino's tried to get creative. It added new products like Cheesy Dots in 2004 and Sub Sandwiches in 2008. Its rival Pizza Hut was also expanding its menu by reintroducing pasta. But new menu products weren't solving Domino's deeper problems. A viral 2009 YouTube video that showed Domino's employees tampering with food only made things worse. Pizza Hut was much better at using social media to sell its pizza. Domino's annual sales sunk to their lowest point since 2003, when the recession hit in 2009. Pizza Hut was still the market leader at this point, but its sales also shrunk that year. Investors weren't happy. In November 2008, as a financial crisis was wreaking havoc on the stock market, shares of the pizza chain fell below $3. Domino's knew it had to get bold. In late 2009, it launched an ad campaign that admitted what customers already knew. Domino's pizza wasn't good. It had cardboard crust and ketchup-like sauce. The commercials told customers that they had totally reformulated its recipe with a brand new sauce and a garlic-infused crust. As folks realized, this really is an improved product from what Domino's had for years and years. It's, it's kind of been a snowball effect that continues to benefit Domino's to this day. In the middle of its relaunch in 2010, Domino's appointed Patrick Doyle as CEO. He had been with the company for more than a decade as an executive. Now, he was entrusted to lead its turnaround. Customers were buying the ad campaign and Domino's pizza. In fact, the campaign was so successful that Pizza Hut later mimicked it in 2014 when it changed its own pizzas. Over the next couple of years, Domino's upgraded the quality of the rest of its menu with new items like its Parmesan bread bites and artisan pizzas. But under Doyle's leadership, the company's flashiest new products weren't pizza or pasta. It was technology. In 2008, Domino's rolled out a tracker that let customers follow the progress of their order until it was delivered a feature that was revolutionary in the delivery business at the time. The company continued to launch new features for the tech-friendly customer. In 2014, Domino's was one of the first companies to roll out voice ordering on its app. The company began offering zero-click ordering in 2016, too. Open an app, and your favorite pizza gets ordered. Doyle was fond of describing Domino's as a tech company that just happens to make pizza. By 2015, Half of the pizza chain's orders came from digital channels, like its app or website. And out of all pizzas ordered online, a whopping 31% were Domino's. We've been doing this for 60 years, um, and because we've built all of our technology and all of our data in-house, you know, that information that we gather on our customers is very sacred to us. It's, it's a competitive advantage. We know where you live, we know um, your ordering preferences, we know, we know we make it as convenient as possible by tokenizing your form of payment if you want to pay via credit card. 
Um, there's a lot of data that we have. We can do a lot of our testing uh, with customers. We don't want to uh, give up uh, that data to a third party who could theoretically end up using it against us. Getting its customers to order online has long been important for Domino's revenue. Digital orders usually raise the overall receipt total. With a full menu in front of them, customers are more likely to order cheesy bread or a two liter soda. The company has also used tech to focus on another big part of its business, delivery. At the same time that companies like Amazon and Alphabet have been testing drones, so has Domino's. In fact, the chain was the first to deliver pizza with one of the remote controlled aircrafts in New Zealand. And like Walmart and Uber, Domino's has tested self-driving delivery cars across the country. And the company plans to test more autonomous vehicles in late 2019 in Houston. The spotlight on tech combined with better pizza has paid off for Domino's. Revenue more than doubled from $1.57 billion in 2010 to $3.43 billion in 2018. In 2017, it overtook Pizza Hut as the market leader in the quick service pizza sector. Since 2010, its stock has risen more than 3,200%. The S&P 500 is only up 164% in the same period. Even after Rich Allison took over as CEO in June 2018, Domino's tech focus has continued. In early 2019, the company incorporated artificial intelligence into its loyalty program. Users just had to take a picture of pizza to get points to redeem for a free pizza. But Allison isn't just focusing on tech. He also has a big plan to revolutionize the chain's delivery strategy. Third-party delivery services have made it possible to deliver any kind of food. That means that consumers' options are virtually limitless. Delivery platforms are also ramping up their advertising. On its last two earnings calls, executives have said aggressive marketing activity from third-party delivery apps put pressure on domestic same-store sales. On its second quarter 2019 call, Allison said that Domino's continues to doubt the business model of delivery services. For restaurants, third-party delivery can be a double-edged sword. It can introduce customers to a new eatery and boost sales. But delivery services like Uber Eats and DoorDash charge restaurants for every order placed on their platform. A 20% or 25% commission fee takes a big bite of restaurants' razor-thin profit margins. And as the delivery market grows more crowded, third-party providers are pushing discounts to gain market share. Morgan Stanley estimates that third-party aggregators will bite off 1-2% to of Domino's U.S. same-store sales. I do think it is a threat near term, but I, I think at the same time, if you look at a lot of the delivery aggregators right now, um, very few of them, if any, are, are actually making money. And I think there's going to have to be some changes to their business model, whether it be either raising prices or extend into other non uh, restaurant uh, type products or get more and more aggressive into that space. And as that happens, I, I see a layer of disruption and that's where Domino's can maybe recapture some of the, the share they've lost in that regard. Um, in other words, I think there is room for, for the delivery aggregators to be there, but I don't think uh, at the end of the day, Domino's is going to lose its uh, dominance in that field, particularly as it pushes new technologies and, and the boundaries with the technologies that it already has. Still, to compete with Uber Eats and Seamless, the company that promised to deliver a pizza in 30 minutes or less is trying to shave that time down even more. Their plan? Open a lot of stores. By 2025, Allison wants to add 2,000 more stores. More stores don't necessarily mean more sales. In fact, analysts think that new locations are stealing sales from existing Domino stores. However, more locations does mean shorter delivery time and bigger tips for drivers. Focusing on short delivery times has always been key to helping Domino's maintain its lead as the largest global pizza chain. Now, Domino's is betting that it will help the chain reach $25 billion in sales by 2025.